Hi, it's David here with Future Strain. I'd like to welcome you to the channel. Thank you so much for stopping by. Fate brought you here. I did not pay for any likes, views, or subscribers. All of the thumbnails is of the chart that we actually went over, and pretty much all the videos are in real time. I'm sure education brought you here. That's number one. I want to make sure that I acknowledge the reason why you're here. Education brought you here. And recently, I made available my tools for purchase, and you can get them if you would like. I have you know that's more education. I'm gonna give you some of why it is. Okay, I want to let you know why my tools would work for you should you want to be on that side of it. So we're gonna cover that. We're gonna cover why they work. We're gonna cover all the universal concepts in this video because again, you're here to learn. So I want to help you do that. Should you need a professional opinion on your chart, I'm I'm available. Okay, so I'm gonna put the tools right on your chart in some form of text zones or even levels on sound files. So I have sound files as well. Again, it's information. That's what you're here for. And so the tools is just information, another way of you knowing that it should work. So we're going to take a look at that. And we're going to look at, of course, Bitcoin, because this the weekend and the market is closed respectfully. So we're going to go ahead and do uh, real time. We got to do real time. Pretty much all the videos are in real time. Most of you videos here must watch list. You can go in and take a look at some of this information. It's a whole lot of stuff here. And then, of course, if you never read, read a chart before in your life, you'll definitely want to go in and start with this information. Here's the universal threshold, how far the bar will pull back before it resumes. There's the price action trend. I use price and price alone. Uh, and of course, every bar is a trend. The universal price action method, a bar and a half try to get you in it in real time to let you know it should keep going the universal chart scale unless you blink for a really long time you're going to see the market turn in front of you so you don't have to look left and again i'm offering my indicators if you want to be a part of that information i'm explain to you why they work i'm gonna just go ahead and do that because i haven't done that yet i haven't done that and i want to take the time to outline to you why they work why they work can't give you all the specs but i want to give you what makes the tools significant what makes them work all right, so let's go ahead and do that because you're here for information. I want to give you loads of it. All right, so this is what I think about markets. I'll let you read it. I won't read it to you, but you are taught to believe that this is random. So everything about the market, you're taught to believe that it's random. But the deception is the arrangement of the abundance of candles, but there's really only two on the chart. I teach people how to read the market like literature because that's all it's providing us is information. All right. So just like an author will make a book from the title until the last remarks, he's just going to make mention or what the book was really about, all of what it was about. He's going to keep making mention on that topic over and over and over again. So that's important. All right. So this is a principle that I'm looking for in the chart. Now, this is significant because when I go and explain to you why my tools are important, you're going to want to just regard this. You're going to want to regard this aspect of what it is that I'm looking for. It's not just this that makes my tools work. It's not just majority. It's some other stuff that I'm looking for in the chart because you're going to see signals in places where the bars are not big. <laughs> so it's it's some other things that I'm looking for. That's all. And so I'm going to try to give you a basic outline as to what that is that makes my tools work. I'm going to try my best to do just that. Here's all of what you would be uh, receiving included in the uh, suite. There's a few more in there. I just didn't put them on this uh, on this list, but there's a few more in there. Now, the ones with the asterisks are pretty much ones that's favored. All right. So they're preferred. And of course, if they have a couple of dots beside it, even the more so. All right. And I'm going to let you take a look at that. And again, this is a follow the plot process because I can't do Q&A about all the code of you know all these different indicators. I can't do that. But I am going to give you a foundational perspective of what makes for the, the signals and why you should be able to trust them. I'm going to give you a foundational, I mean, absolutely foundational perspective so you can understand the power of the tools. Let's just take a look at what the market is doing right now. This, this is Bitcoin with just a few of my tools on it. So I've been covering this in uh, prior videos. If you have, haven't been here, I've been covering this uh, through these couple of examples here. Just kind of showing you which ones that's important and of course knowing where the bar can close we can take a look at that too that's that dtt map that's this here all right so this information right here i'm just kind of open this up just a bit that zone that just uh plotted if you will this bar more often than not will not close outside of this this zone it just won't and this given either direction that it decides to trade in it will not close outside of that zone Really powerful information if you're trading a daily. I know a lot of people want to find the daily bias and 
yeah, you can put it on the hourly, whatever time frame you prefer. This is a one minute. All right. So we'll come back and take a look at this. This bar is about to tick out. So it's going to um, it's going to adjust and give us some more information. Matter of fact, let's wait till it tick out and let's see what the next uh, what the next zone will look like. And then we'll go ahead and talk about some of this information that's on the chart. Let's let this bar tick out. And again, this could help, you know, when you may be dealing with a situation that's unfavorable, you know, overlap. Don't want to go anywhere going to kind of go with that all right so that's what the market is suggesting right now as far as the bar not being able to close uh above or beneath this bar above or beneath it now it can trade outside of the zone it can it can trade outside of the zone but can it close that's a whole nother dynamic of taking entries all right so can it close outside the zone most uh most favorable definitely if you're trying to trade 9 30 or if you're trying to trade news announcements this is very significant very useful very useful information that you will want to have available to you. And again, the market is providing me this information and then I just reference it. And as I explained to you, what's in the code, well, not in the code of this, but what's behind my indicators, why they work. If I explain to you some of what, what I'm considering when I'm coding this information, you'll get a better understanding of why you can trust uh, the tools, you know, when they plot, that's all. And so a whole minute has ticked out and they have yet to close outside either side of that information there, all right? And this, again, it's dynamic, so it will adjust based on the information that the market is providing, all right? So just a little bit of something that I, I again, I, I've been able to notice with the market, that's all, a little bit, just a little bit. All right, so now the market actually stopped here uh, you can go in and keep taking a look at that. But the market stopped here. All right. Now, as it was coming down, you'll notice my text uh, kind of came in here. OK. And then, of course, as it came down, you don't know it's going to lift until we do it. You know, we didn't get it right away here, but then we got a little bit right there. Came down in this area. And then, of course, you know, you didn't get the text. You know, you kind of got the, the bar for the downside, not the upside. All right. So the downside, let's keep going back down. Now here, you know, there's the text here. They stopped here. They stopped, but you're not getting any signals to get it to turn around. OK, this is what I want you to kind of just take notice. They're stopping. They're stopping. They're stopping after the break of the lows. They're stopping, but you're not getting any any signals, no indications, no indications, no indications until you got here. And there's the run up. OK, there's the run up. Now, I taught those in the private community about what this is and how to read this to know that it's a chance that, you know, it can it can go down. Uh, I do have signals that could have possibly caught this. I will say that it's in the list. I just don't have them all up here. These are the ones that I have on this information. All right. Now, notice no signals is here. They start to come in over here and then there's your drop. OK, um, so what makes the, the tool significant? What makes them significant? We're going to go over that in just a moment. Matter of fact, let's take and let's take and take a look at where it stopped. Let's do that. Let's let's take and do that. Let me just take a look here, and then we're going to take a look here. What kind of slowed it down? So when it came down the first time before it broke to a new low, let's take a look at that information. So the first time they were coming into this area when they uh. When they dropped down, they came right into that uh, that AR. I believe that's AR, or is that an IR? Let me open this up again. Oh, IR. So that's the IR bar right here. So they came into this IR bar right here when they dropped down, and that's what stopped them with that big lift. All right, so that's what stopped them with that that lift. Now I know we got this blue bar on the bottom, so they haven't reached down that far. But let's go back. Let's go back here. So when they came down, and again, this is where they stopped and they lifted up. Now notice, notice this information here. Okay. Out of all of this, this information from this bar's low to here, why here? Why here? That's all. Why why there? Uh this bar, this bar here looks like this one. It looks just like it. So it's a again, it's a little bit of information that's there that lets me know that this is important. Let's go, let's go now. Like here, okay, we had the supply and demand into this bottom, but you're not getting any signals until over here, okay? And then of course we leaned into that doji and then we took off to the upside. 
All right, so let's take a look at, uh, again, just let's just take a look at this information. So now we're getting, uh, getting a decline. Now, can they stay down? We're going to go to the plane chart, and I'll bring this back in just a moment. I'm going to bring this back in just a moment, and we're going to take a look at what's happening, you know, when it comes to the signals. We'll, we'll take another look. But let me, let's go over why this information works. Let's, let's go over that. Let me just put this over here out the way. Let me just put this out of the way for you guys. All right, so now we'll come back to that in just a moment. Let's count our trend, and then we're going to talk about this this information. We're going to talk about it. All right, so we got one, two, three, four, five, six, and there's seven. Man, you got to get seven bars. Seven bars closing higher than the prior. We got to get seven bars closing higher than the prior. You can count the ones on that side while I'm doing this. So we got seven bars closing higher than the prior. Let's take in change the color of this i'm gonna cover pretty much everything in this video cover everything in this video and i'm gonna make sure i explain to you why why the tools work i'm gonna try to explain to you can't tell you what the code is behind them but i'm gonna tell you what's what's causing me to say that this is important and this isn't important let me give you an idea of what what i'm looking for just an idea because again i code based on principles things that's going to always happen it's like gravity you can be 700 pounds or 70 pounds gravity still will work it will still work okay so what it got almost halfway there so now let's go here one two three four five six and there's your seventh one all right so that's your seventh one now Typically, they can go the distance of the trend. I know they didn't go with the one to the upside. They didn't make that. All right, so we'll bring back the other chart with the indicators in a, in a little bit. We need to talk about this information here so I can help you understand my tools and what what's important when I code, what's important when I code versus your other vendors out here, all right? And again, you can go with anybody's uh, information that you want to go with, but I suppose you came to the channel because you're looking for information, just information. And the indicators that I have is information as well. You may have some indicators, but are they are they based on the things that's important? That's all. Are they based on the things that's important? Now, that's the universal trend. The universal price action method, if we're going to go down, we're just looking for this. We want the mid of the bar to fall beneath that, that low. That's it. That's all we're looking for. And if we want to go up, this is what we're looking for. Now, should this happen? Should this happen? You're going to see a level pop up on the back of the bar. That's the universal concept. Should that happen, you, you're going to see the level pop up on the back of the bar. But the, the midpoint of the bar needs to exceed the bar in some capacity to the prior. Now, there's a threshold on every bar. There's a universal threshold. This little information right here. Okay, I'm going to teach you how to trade right now. It's really simple. It's not hard. That threshold right there typically would house the low if it's going to go up or would house the high if it's going to go down. So this threshold here on this bar, okay, they pushed into it. They pushed into it. Let's see if it'll continue to the downside. It's just that simple. I just explained to you trading. Every bar is a trend. Every bar is a trend. But in a broader sense, and it's a reason why I'm picking seven, and, and trust me, it's logical because I'm a logical individual. It normally would go that far. It normally would. Now, what if they don't want to break the bottom? Let's talk about that, too. If they don't want to break the bottom, okay, this is the center of that up, okay? This is the center of the up, and we're going to talk about the trend and what what does it mean to us, you know? Because every time we trade, every time we trade, we have to know that there's someone that's just like us, think like us, expect like us, desire like us at at work. There's someone there, although we can say there's alg algos in the market, running the market, da 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 da. At the end of the day, the algos are being programmed by someone, all right? So now, whenever you have a thought, this is your trend, you have the end in mind, okay? The end is present in mind, okay? So your expectation, your desire is what's moving you towards destiny, moving you towards your goal. 
what you want to experience. It's moving you towards it. Okay, so desire gets you there. You can expect something, but desire is what gets you there. That's what gets you there. That's the motivation to actually get there. Now, here's here's the problem. Here's the problem. I want to outline to you the problem. These two words are very significant in the market, very significant. Um, I would ba base the overall experience on these two words, just on these two words alone. So when I code indicators, I want you to understand what it is that I'm, I'm doing when I code indicators. And when I code indicators, what I'm looking for, it's not just math. There's no, that's, that's not it. It's not just that. The naivety is what will have you suffering what will have you depleted, uh, not getting the experience you want, because it's just a lack of knowledge, okay? So, and I've told people on many occasions that, I'll say it this way, and I'm gonna say it in a way that's just simple. It, it, they're gonna keep you from knowing what the plan is, unless they themselves unveil their intentions, okay? So the, Invaluable is down here and they'll they'll protect this at all costs. The timing, the timing, how to get in the trade and get out of the trade. They're going to protect this at all costs. So everything that I'm, I'm trying to explain to you is priceless. It's invaluable. It's priceless. Because I want to talk to you and help you understand timing for free, for free, something that can financially change your life. I want to help you do it for free. It's unheard of. You're not going to find this online. You're not. People pay a great deal of money to learn what I'm trying to expose to you for free. And then, of course, the, the tools is just an additional flexible option if you want to have the tools as well, because it's another form of my education. It is. And so when the tools are being plotted on your chart, I'm, I'm giving you right now the reason why you can begin to trust them if you haven't already purchased the suite. Naivety. Naivety is the thing that'll make you uh, suffer, not uh, with just this life, life period. So you can take everything that I'm saying and apply it towards life. What you don't know, your your lack of knowing is what's going to cause you to have problems, even in trading. All right. Now, here's the conundrum. Here's here's the problem. And I purposely put the candles uh, in between these words because this is the side by which all the professional activity and even those that trade professionally they're 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 really they're really great at this you know they're really great at this part of keeping you know uh i would say people that don't know from knowing what should happen they're great at this side you know they they won't tell you well i'm on this side too i'm gonna be honest but i don't want to keep you from not knowing I want to actually tell you what you need to know in order to get results in your trading. I, I want to tell you. But most of the professionals on this side or the institutions, if you will, would never tell you what their intent is. They, they'll never they'll never tell you, you. They'll do all that they can to hide it from you in your trading. They'll, they'll do the best that they can to keep your timing messed up, to keep you from knowing, you know, what's the overall objective, what they plan to do. They, they don't want you to know that. And so I, I understand that this right here, that naivety is a problem. Now, here's where the trader pretty much is right now. This is where the trader is almost all the time where they're at. They're going to amass all of this knowledge about the market. And I mean, a lot of it, but it's, it's actually useless in some degree. Just it depends on what you're learning. I would say it that way. It depends on what you're learning. It's what you're learning that makes it whether or not it's useful or useless. Because knowledge, knowledge, okay, I want to have you know, is you having information. Now, fluid intelligence is the ability to think abstractly, reason quickly, and problem solve independently of any prior, any previously acquired knowledge. So to be able to, you know, kind of, Act in the moment, because that's how we learn in life. That's how we learn in life. We're always on that hard right edge of living, and we always learn what we don't know. And so we're we're right in between naivety and knowledge, and we're we're right on the edge of naivety all the time. And we're we're living life, and we're we're trying to learn it. Okay, so we're we're learning life. 
And once we learn it, we possess the knowledge, knowing the edge to how to, you know, stay away from the things that we don't want to experience. And so the indicators are meant to help you stay away from the things that you don't want to experience. And even the channel, everything that I'm promoting here, I did this, you know, for a reason is to help you learn how to, you know, interact with life without, you know, I guess the things that you don't want to experience. If you don't want to lose your money, if you don't want to suffer, you want to start paying attention to some of the things that I'm saying. So when it comes back to expectation, okay, and desire, these two are separate things, but they, 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 they need to be together in order to get things to work. This is how I'm trying to code tools. I'm trying to code the tools to reflect desire and expectation because it's a strong feeling of wanting to have something or wishing for something to happen. It's a strong belief that something will happen or be the case in the future. So I'm trying to get the tools to reflect what it is that the market, the market. Now, remember, this right here is important for those that's been on the channel. And I'll go over for those that uh, are new. This is who we are. But the market is a more sophisticated model of who we are. Because the participants, the, those people that have control of the market, because this is this is not just some generated art, artificial experience here. There, there's there's a, a I'm certain a conglomerate of behind all of this. This is the world's market. You know, everybody in the world is interacting with this this information, and across the board, it was created by someone. It's it's a it's a place of decisions. All right. So the participants, they create the outcome, right? So if we have a sophisticated model of who we are and they have designed a function to ensure that the, the outcome would absolutely happen. So now it's important to have tools that can identify the desire and the expectation so it can get met, okay? Because remember, they can make sure that the function ensures the outcome. And so I'm looking for the strong belief and the strong feeling in the chart. That's what I'm looking for when I code tools. I'm not just looking for your standard engulfing pattern, your, yeah, I don't know, um, inverted hammers, hammers. No, that's not it. That's not it. Because this is a decision place. That's all this is, a decision place. And they're doing their best to make sure that you remain naive. OK, I want to make sure that you don't know. Because they know that the information, the knowledge that you're acquiring, if it doesn't involve if, if it doesn't involve the sophisticated model of their desires and their expectations, you'll believe that your desire or your expectation will begin to get met because this has been with you all of your life. Your desire, your expectation has been with you all of your life. And everything that you're dealing with, we're still waiting for our breakdown. Everything that you're still look for this, because if we're going down, you gotta keep looking for this, okay? Even though I'm talking to you, I want you to keep looking for this if we're going down and utilize that threshold as well. So make sure you're using this when the bar retraces back, make sure you use that information there. So everything in your life, you're living on that, that edge of not knowing, gathering information, and anticipating the next moment. In the market, in the market, the sophisticated model of the, the participants, okay, they can ensure their outcome. What tools are you using that can spot desire, expectation? The, these two components is really important and the education that maybe you've come across prior to this channel here. Have you encountered information that will help you exercise the fluid intelligence to read this information in real time? Because the DTT no touch, no close is a real time identification process for the function that can be recorded historically for reference. So if you want to reference the information, it'll be there. 
It'll help you remember, hey, they did this and that was important when they did it because it deals with their desire as well as their expectation. The doctor, he performs a procedure. You go to any kind of court, they have proceedings. So the procedural is relating to an established or an official way of doing something. And of course, the market is indicative of that because it's not just them believing something or feeling that they want to have their goals met, you know, because their goals are getting met. They can ensure that they will, but they're using a procedure to get it done. And that's important. Now, if they want to lift up, let's just take a look at this. Let's get our, um, let's get our threshold, our universal threshold here. Okay. Let's get our universal threshold from this bar, this bar right here, the very bar that they leaned into and then popped out of. Let's get our universal threshold just in case they want to pop up. So I have, you know, I just want to make sure I state this to you. I have, you know, we can go with this one as well. That's the universal threshold for that down that they just did. Let's kind of throw that right there. Now, will they hold it? I don't know. But I just know with that universal function, you know, this is universal. This real-time function that I'm showing you, that's important because that level popped up. That's important. That's important. Now, again, I provide the tools to filter out because you'll see levels pretty much everywhere. Some of them get overshot. Some of them, they'll blow past and then they'll, they'll keep going. I make it available to you what, what this is. Okay, so what this is. You know, now, mind you, I told you that this is the function. I, t I told you that this is the function. I mean, that's pretty much what you need just to get it done. But if you wanted the tools, the tools are trying to sort out expectation and desire. So it's working on the the undertone to all actions. It's, it's working on the thing that's beneath the choice. What what makes them want to stop price on this price level? What makes them want to stop price on this price level? That's what the tools is trying to find out. So when I code the indicators, I'm trying to make sure that the indicators look for this. Look for this. Look for the strong belief, the strong feeling. And it's not just about, okay, let's take a look at the, uh, the indicators really quickly here. You have no touch levels in here. Okay, you have no touch levels in here, but there's no indication here, none whatsoever. And matter of fact, this push here, you still didn't get any kind of indication, but this time you, you're getting one. So I'm trying to get the tools, I'm trying to get the tools to tell you what's significant. Now, this pop up right here, somebody would buy this lift. Somebody would buy this lift. And yes, it fell into the threshold, but you're not getting any signal okay so not nothing uh from the the indicators here you're not you're not getting any blue bars you're not getting no blue levels you're not getting no map you're not getting any text even though that pop-up happened even though it happened you're not getting that that here you, you're just not getting it all right now remember they supposed to be able to close outside the zone and if not yeah they, they may overlap a bit they may but this is going to suggest to you potentially where price may close moving forward, which is important, which is important. I have you know that. Now, just wanted to show you that in relation to what it is that I'm trying to convey to you about the tools. The tools are there to help you guys decipher uh, what's strong feelings or what's strong desires. That's, that, that's what I'm trying to look for. So when I tell you I'm coding principles, I'm trying to code principles into what it is that is available to us because this is all we have to go on. You know, what, what they're giving us is price and time and you can get size too. You can look at size, but this is what you, what you got. And so when it comes to uh, reading this information, you're always on the edge of naivety. You're always there because it's hidden from you as well as myself. It, it for the most part, until they make it available, it's hidden from us what they intend. And so, while in fluid intelligence, while in the moment, you need a real time function that can interpret the intention before it settles. And so once the, the intention settles, 
you always have primary and secondary goals. Now, I'm not going to dive too far into that, but sometimes you, you'll settle for something lesser than the thing that you wanted at first. OK, and that's where you'll get, you know, some no touches on the way, but yet they'll blow past them. I want to try to make emphasis on what's primary. That's all. What's primary? What's the strong feeling? What's the strong belief? That's what the tools are meant to do. They're meant to do just that. All right. So just wanted to give you some information about what it is that I'm conveying to the public. That's all it is. Information I'm trying to convey. I'm trying to give you a chance to look at something just like the information here on the channel. You came here because you wanted to learn some information. I think it only fair to convey to you what makes my tools worth the the investment if you want them. If you want them, and you can use it on a free version of Ninja Trader 8. You can still place trades on whatever platform you're on. You can still place those trades. Uh, but if you just want to chart the tools to get an added opinion, that's all it is, a professional's opinion onto your chart. I want to tell you that my tools, you will want to, I don't know, maybe consider them if you're in the market for it. Only if you're in the market for it. But if you're not, there's tons of free information here. And I'm trying to do something experimental, to be honest with you. I don't like what the space is becoming on YouTube, where there are so many people uh, making trading very difficult, very hard. It's not hard. I've been doing this for many years. It's really not hard. It's it's simple. It's simple, but you got to understand function. It's like the car engine. I said this in another video. It's like the car engine. Every car going to have it. OK, that's what makes the car. Now, my tools is telling you this. It's this kind of engine. So it's, it's bigger. OK, it's going to do this this time. My tools do that. That's what it's looking for. The strong belief. OK, it's looking for the strong feeling, the strong belief. That's what my tools are looking for. Really important that you get that, that all the information that I'm providing on this channel is worth far more than two hundred dollars because I'm trying to educate you too. I'm trying to educate you, okay? Not sell you indicators. This, this is it's just another, another way of me conveying information, okay? And yes, it's a follow the plot because I can't tell you what, what I'm using to get you know those signals. I can't tell you that, but I have you know the reason behind the code. And that's the thing I want you to know. The reason behind the, the signals is I'm looking for strong feelings and strong belief i'm looking for that information that's important all right so let's do this again and i want you to follow the rules rewind the video follow the rules go back through the chart follow the rules just follow the rules you see they they overshot the zone remember our map was down here they didn't close outside the map the dtt map they didn't close outside of it the threshold is down here they have yet to close outside of it now it may do it the other aspect that I forgot to mention, here's the other aspect that I forgot to mention, the chart scale. So the market will turn in front of you. It's always in front of you. You don't have to look hindsight. I forgot to touch on that. You don't have to look hindsight. So as long as they are remaining beneath the center of this chart, just take in this window right here. Just take in this window right here from here to here. Just take in that window and try to find what's important. Stop looking way up here and off to the left. You don't have to do all of that. Here's another thing I want to tell you. There's a lot of people that have hard time, have a hard time trading one time frame. OK, they have a hard time trading one time frame. It wouldn't make any sense to go and trade a bunch of time frames because then you're just multiplying what you already don't understand. Remember, I showed you the the. Uh, the uh, page where I said, hey, you know, it's an abundance of candles to confuse you, but it's only two. The time frames only multiplies how many candles you're going to see. And so if you're having difficulty following along with just one chart, put a, put away the rest of the time frames. Put those away. I want to say that, too. I, I feel the need to go ahead and say that, too. We immediately pulled up this chart and we said, hey, look. And I told you guys start counting when they was over here. I told you start counting. I say start counting for me while I do this. And we projected that they'll get here. Now, I'm not saying that they will turn from here because I said there's a trend. 
and here's the center of the trend. But should they want to, here's the center of it, you know, if, if they want to, in the center here. And the center is indicative of this. I went over this in other videos. It's the cost of the thought, okay, the primary and the secondary values. It's the cost of the thought. Because in, in order for you to want to do anything, in order for you to want to do anything, let's put the map in front of you so you can see where price is at. In order for you to want to do anything, you got to evaluate whether or not it's worth it to you. And so the center of the trend is the cost of the thought. It's it's whether or not you want to go with that idea, whether or not you have it in you to pursue it. It's the desire. Am I am I really in strong feelings and strong belief about this? You know, do I really want to pursue that? And you'll find that often. Okay, so now we now we got a blue blue bar. I don't know if this is going to work. I don't know. I don't know. I see that they, that they do not want to close beneath uh, that threshold. But I must say, I must say, I must say, you didn't get it at first. Now you're getting it here. So let's see how far they may want to push up. You don't want them guys running over these signals. That's the other thing I want to tell you, too. You don't want them running over the signals. But let's see how high it'll lift up. Now, can it close outside the zone? Now, this pressure here, I have several pressures depending on your uh, depending on your timing needs. This pressure here is going to try to read to you the ignition. So the IR, the IR here, it'll try to read it to you before the signals show up. It'll try to read it to you. Now I have different pressures, again, for different timing needs, different timing needs. I didn't think they'll want to close outside of here, but let's, let's see. Now, they don't close outside of here. Let's see if they'll turn back down, absorb this, and begin to push on and hit our uh, distance here. So let's go ahead and watch this. And again, now we got that. So that's that version of fair value gap that I coded. Now I coded a version of that. That's that's this. So when three bars that'll pop up and that level will come in and they can reach into it and test it. All right. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, we had one up here. We had one here. They reached into that, fell down lower, but then they flipped. Okay, they flipped. So the strong feelings, strong belief became more important at that moment. All right, so I coded that. Now this one here. The horizontal one is that fair value gap with the longer level. This one here, you know, that's that's uh, with vertical. Uh, this is the map supply and demand. OK, now this can come in uh, at the beginning of the move or at the end of the move as well. You know, so it, it can come in to start it off or right before it flips, it can show up, too. All right. All right. So let's see if they can push a bit higher. Let's see if they can push a bit higher above, above this information here. OK, that, again, they didn't do it on this one. They couldn't get it done. You had them come right back. And now my signal is saying, yep, this is important. This this trip. So let's see how much higher it will climb. Let's just see. They're trading right back into that zone. And again, this is Bitcoin. It, it doesn't matter uh, what market, what time frame. You can plot the tools. I do have range chart indicators. I have a second chart indicator. So I use a one second as well uh, to uh, track the market. I, I, I do use a one second. Let me see. Can I find you one of those? Let me see. Can I find you one of those? I got a one second somewhere around here. I'm trying to find it. There we go. All right. So we got a one second chart here for you. I got a one second chart as well. So it'll try to read it to you. And I got the IR in here, but I do have my um, one second aggression text in here. So you'll see the, the A's. The A's is the aggression text for the one second. But I do have that IR. I have that IR being printed inside of this. Uh, I did uh, drop that in there really quickly. I had I have this IR in here and they came in really, really aggressive in that in that push down into that bottom. Now, again, the the pressure that's here is the same pressure that's on this chart as well. Now, they're definitely meeting the measure here. I believe they'll close outside of this. Let's see what happens. Let's see. Let's see if they can close outside of it before the bar close or if they want to reach up just above this. Well, maybe not. I thought they can get that done. Um, let's see. So they may overshoot this. They may overshoot it. I don't know. They may overshoot it. They're not trying to close outside that zone. They are, well, hold on. They're having a change of mind, which is important. <laughs> They're having a change of mind, which is important. But the pressure here and the pressure here is uh, trying to read you that, yeah, they got it done. All right. So let's just see if they can stay, stay beneath here and go back down. I know we're coming right back into that blue bar. Notice how this threshold is really just holding that market. 
and again, being here is where we're learning. That, that naivety, that's where we're always learning in life. And so then it becomes knowledge, but it's right in that in-between on that hard right edge. That's important. You can take what you know, but it's what did you learn? So the knowledge that you're learning from other places, what is it that you know? And can you apply it to the market and it be universal? That it'll show up all the time, no matter what market, no matter what time frame. What did you learn? It's not, hey, I learned about this prior pivot. Let me just draw, you know, a supply and demand zone on it. No, that, that may not get it. You got to be able to look into the market and find what's important to these guys. You got to be aware of function, principles, the thing that makes for all of our choices, everything that we are. You got to find that in the chart. And preferably in real time while while it's happening. So while it's happening, can you find it? That's important. And I tried to make sure that the tools reflect just that. Yeah, they were serious here. Let's see if they can go ahead and break through this low. Let's see. Can they go ahead and break through this low? They're, they're absorbing these guys right here. So let's let's see. They tried to buy it here. Let's see. Can we go ahead and get the break? Let's see, can we go ahead and get the break? I doubt they'll close outside the zone again. I doubt they'll do it. They're, again, operating at the lower half of the chart. Again, you can divide your chart in half. It's really, really simple. Okay, they didn't close outside the zone, but let's see, can we still go ahead and get the breakthrough? And again, this zone adapts to the market's conditions. It'll, it'll again, take the information that's dealing with how, how strong of a feeling, you know, how strong of a belief. That's what this does. This keeps track of the mind. Remember, I told you that the mind has the end attached to it. The end is present with the thought. It's there. And it's all about can you move towards it? That's all. Can you move towards the thought? So if you knew, if you knew what was on the market's mind, if you knew what was on the market's mind, before you placed your trade, it could be useful. It can be helpful. And so when I code the indicators, I'm doing it based on what could possibly be on the market's mind at this moment. And how would this impact price as a reference? That's all as a, as a reference. That's all it is as a reference. What was what was being conveyed to me at that moment? And now we should be able to reference what was on the market's mind. What was on the market's mind when it conveyed that information? And so I try to code the indicators to reflect just that. I want to say that to you so you'll know. My indicators are not like everybody else's indicators. I have to put them on the same chart. I do. I have to put them on the same chart as everybody else's information. So you can get your RSIs, whatever that you like to use. I'm not using any kind of oscillators. I'm not using no support and resistance tools. But you can get whatever indicators that you would like and put them on your chart in conjunction with what it is that I, I'll, you know, of course, extend to you. But I did want to make available to you what makes for my tools. Why are they significant? Because this, these are the ideas that I know uh, that we all operate uh, based on. And again, the, the market is a sophisticated model of who we are. That's all it is. They have no interest in closing outside of that. I don't want to hold the video too long, but I definitely want to give you a chance to look at the universal approach and, of course, have a level of understanding about what it is that I'm showing you. You know, I'm showing you information. Absolutely showing you information. And that's all it is. Indicators, what's on the channel, all information that can be extremely useful to you moving forward. Do forget the noise outside. Extremely useful to you moving forward. I want to give YouTube something that it just doesn't have online. It doesn't have it online. I don't want to waste my time, nor will I waste anyone else's time. I want to make sure that you know what's available to you as well, what's available to you. So when I'm offering uh, information, that's what the tools are. It's just information. That's all it is. Additional information. All right, so maybe we'll get the break here. 
And this is how long they're holding the threshold of this bar. It's important. This bar is important. It's, it's outlined in blue and it's, it's definitely green with a couple signals on the back of it. So it's important. So I understand the stall. I totally get it. I absolutely get it. But again, if you're wanting to use your daily, your hourly, whatever time frame you prefer, you can put the DTT map on it. And it would give you an idea of how long a uh, price may trade in that particular direction and possibly won't even close. And there's ways to trade this. I just I can't do that online, but there's ways to trade uh, the map. There's ways to trade it. But you may have, again, your own approach to it and just get just get the suite if you want it and use it. However, you see that it could probably benefit you. And I absolutely want it for you. I want you to have the best for yourself. That's why I coded the indicators to try to provide the best that I know about the markets, because the market is doing the same thing all the time. It's the engine. It's the engine. It's in every car, every airplane, every motorcycle. It's the engine. It's always there. The tools is just going to tell you, hey, it's this kind of engine. So this should work this time. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and go. I'm not going to waste any more of your time. But I did want, again, to convey to you the importance of knowing, knowing, knowing you can't uh, keep operating off of old knowledge about the market, old pivots, uh, just old information and think that this is going to work. It's not. You're going to need to have the real time function, the real time identification process on your side. You're going to want to have that. Because right on that, that edge of naivety, you know, we're trying to learn and this is where you're learning. You're learning what you don't know. OK, you're learning what you don't know. So we need that fluid intelligence to adapt, you know, and problem solve independently you know, of any previously acquired knowledge. So we can, you know, begin to formulate these understandings uh, behind what it is that we're experiencing in the market. But we can't trust that we know what tomorrow is going to uh, convey to us without the idea being made, I guess, visible. So we need them to avail the idea, the thought itself, so we can have an idea, the map, the DTT map, of what destiny actually looks like. I wish you all the best with your trading. Take care.